Hello everyone, um, I'm going to just go over something that we did in class, but I felt that maybe I didn't go into it in depth enough, and I don't feel like spending a whole other class on it, so um, I wanted to just do it here, and that way you can watch it at your leisure, and if you are confused about it, then you can see this. So in class recently we've been talking about electrostatics, and what happens when you have one charged object um, brought near another charged object and after it touches that object, etc., or a neutral object, rather. So, um, in class, you had a rod that was charged one way or another. Let's start the rod off neutral. Oh, that's another thing. So, <clears throat> I've been using these words, uh, charge and neutral, and never really actually uh, went into sort of in-depth what it means. So, when I draw something like this, there's... Objects are made of, obviously, protons and electrons, so it's positive charges and negative charges. And when I draw something that looks like this, where the number of positive charges equals the number of negative charges that I draw, so here there's six negative charges and six positive charges, I assume that that object is neutral. So there's it's not overly positive charge and it's not overly negative charge, it's just neutral. There ha There is no charge. Um, and so again, when I drew the bar and I drew the ball, sorry, keep this consistent, um, I drew both items as having a neutral charge. And this was hanging from some sort of rope. So here I have the neutral bar and the neutral ball. When you brought the neutral bar near the neutral ball, obviously nothing happened. Then let's say this was the green bar um, and you rub the fur on it right so by rubbing the fur on the green bar this is, here's our rabbit fur and so when you rub this on here you are effectively making this more negative how can this be more negative it's because electrons are being forced and inserted onto our neutral object. Now, on the surface of this plastic thing, there's a bunch of extra negative charge. Suddenly, this is a little bit more negative than this, which is still neutral. As a result of this being more negative, when you bring this near a neutral object, what happens is this. Let's go this way. So you have the bar, which I guess is green. I should have drawn it in green, but whatever. And Internally, it is neutral, but outside, it is slightly negative. And then, when you bring it near the ball, what happens is, as we discussed in class, solid objects are made of, like we said, protons and electrons. One unique thing about electrons is that electrons can move. Protons are the particles that make up the solid object, but electrons can move. So when this negatively charged object comes near here, we know that electrons do not want to go near this negatively charged object, right? We know that like charges repel and opposite charges attract, right? So if these negative charges were once distributed, they have since tried to get as far away from this negative from this negatively charged object as possible. As a result, this side of the ball has been rendered slightly more positive than this side. And since this is a negatively charged object and this is slightly positive, what you end up with is a force that pulls it towards this this bar, right? Now, the next step from here was to touch the bar to the ball. And so what happens when you touch them together, all right, so here's our bar. We'll make it negative for the most part. And so when you touch these two things together, what happens is this bar now thinks that the ball is positive because over here there's only positive charges and these positive charges they miss their they miss their negative charges and so since this bar is like hey I got a bunch of negative charges that I don't need um, and 
the ball is like, well, I need some negative charges to make up for the ones that ran away from us. So it actually gives up some of its negative charges. It gives up some of its negative charges that it had on its surface over to the ball. And so now, so this is the before, and so afterwards, what you end up with is that this bar which is still overall negative charge. It didn't give up all of its charges, it just gave up some of them. So, so overall, the net charge of this bar, you can see there's still more negative charges than positive charges. And if you look back here, there's, a four, there's four positive charges, but two more negative charges have jumped on, which means that there's now six negative charges here, making this overall a negative charged object. Well, since this is negative charge and the ball is a negative charge, it's like, wait, I don't like being here anymore, and it runs away, and it gets pushed away by the fact that both of them are a net negative charge. And so that's what we saw in class. We saw the ball, once it touches the bar, suddenly decides it doesn't want to be there anymore, and it gets pushed away. So, just to reiterate again, rubbing the rod, rubbing the rod with the uh, fur resulted in the electrons being pushed onto the rod, making it overall negative. You can see there's six uh, positive and six negative inside, but there's a whole bunch of negative outside. Then, when you bring the rod closer to the ball, the negative charges from the rod push away only the negative charges from in the ball. Notice that these positive charges have not moved. All the positive charges did not come to this side of the ball. All right? That's because, again, positive charges cannot move. Electrons can move. Protons, positive charges, they cannot. Okay? So this is what we call polarization, where all the negative charges run off to one side, leaving some blank positive charges on this side. Then, once you touch the bar to the ball, there is a transfer of electrons, a little shock that takes all the takes some of the electrons and gives up the electrons to the positive charge on this side, leaving this whole thing net negative because now there's more negative charges than positive charges, and then this is net negative and this is net negative, so they push away from each other. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the same process but for the positive charge uh, when you charge this positively because it's slightly different. So here we go again. So now we've got a we've got an object which again starts off neutral. Overall neutral. And then so this was the clear this was the clear plastic. And then you rub this with if you recall that blue silk. Some of you said it was not silk. I'm not convinced. And so what this does, this silk takes away some of these negative charges leaving us with a net uh, positive charge here, right? So now, some of these electrons have been taken away by this silk. It stole them away and left this with a net positive charge. See, there's more positive charges than there are negative ones. And as, of, as always, our ball remains net neutral for the moment. And so now, once we bring over the bar near the ball without touching it, what happens is our now net positive bar, notice in this whole time, whenever I make something positive, I make sure to throw in some negative ones as well, just to realize that there's just because it's positive doesn't mean there's not any negative charges, they're just more positive than negative. And so now that this is net positive, if you can guess what happens here, again, there's polarization, which means that the electrons only, not the pos not the protons, the electrons are like, hey, there's a positive thing over there. I want to be over there. And so they rush over to get as close to the positive thing as they can. And so now this is net positive, and this side of the ball is net negative. So they're oppositely charged, which means that they attract. This is obviously the string, and this is being pulled towards the positive object. Now, this time, when they touch, so they got real close, and there was a touch there. And so this thing, which is now slightly more positive because the silk took away some of the electrons, is like, hey, look at all those electrons over there in that ball. I wouldn't mind having some of those electrons. 
and the electrons are like, well, we want to be over there because you're net positive and we like being with you. And so this, the fact that these things touch actually makes some of these electrons jump over here. And so now this bar, which was net positive, stole some of these electrons. So I circled two of them because I, let's assume that it took two of them. Sorry, this is a positive. And so after that happens, what you end up with is this bar that took, it still has, I'm still going to draw the same number of positive particles, or positive charges rather, um, and it took two of these. So it had two before, and now it took two more. But it's still net positive charge. There's still more positive charges than negative charges, which means that now that these negative charges have left this neutral object, this now has more positive charge than negative charge, and leaving this with a net positive. So now, it's like, wait a minute, you're net positive. I don't want to be over here. And it runs away and gets pushed away by the fact that it is the same charge as itself. And there you have it. And so that is the observations that we made in class. So again, just to reiterate, the silk steals the negative charges from this, leaving it net positive. You bring the... This is an arrow showing progress. I don't know if you noticed. Um, you bring the bar closer, and suddenly there is an attraction because this polarizes. Again, this is polarization. This is attraction due to polarization. Sorry for the handwriting. Um, and these negative charges, which were once distributed evenly, are pulled over to this side because they want to they want to interact with the positive charges they like the positive charges um, and then once you there's contact again contact between the two objects some of those negative charges leave because they want to be with the positive charges they want to go back to a neutral state and the rest of these guys don't know that this is happening over here and so when they leave all of a sudden this is left with a net positive charge and since they are now both net positive, again, one, two, three, four, negative, one, two, three, four, five, six, positive, so net positive. Uh, once there is a positive charge here and a positive charge here, they repel each other. All right, I'm going to stop there because if I make it any longer, none of my students will watch this. So I hope you enjoyed this. This is sort of charging and the reactions between electrostatic objects, and hopefully this will help you on the quiz that I give you tomorrow. Okay, have a good night.